appreciate y'all taking the time to invest in, uh, you know, a, this, we, we've got a new decade coming up. So this is going to be a new foundation of your future. So a lot of people are taking a game plan. Just, you know, we're, we're looking at just the new year anyway, but I mean, we've got a whole new decade that we really got to start thinking about. So um, achieve colossal goals is, um, is one thing that um, I guess I've been good at for a while. And, um, and so I just want to kind of give you um, an overview of what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what I've done this year, um, talk about my daily routine, really building out the plan, and then uh, we're going to get to an actual exercise. So I'm actually going to put you all to work. I hope that's okay. We're going to take, you know, we've got six great speakers today. You are going to get some things that you can take away from today. So, um, uh, 2019, um, you know, I'll tell you we're on track to close over 400 homes as a team, um, and that's going to be almost $100 million in volume. Um, now, granted, we didn't start there. Uh, back, back in 2010, uh, as a single agent, I sold 52 homes, and so it just started a process. Like um, my, you know, really setting the baseline was that first year, and then after that, it's like, well, why don't we do a little bit more? And then you do a little bit more, and then the next year you just try to like I'm just I'm always trying to beat my best self, I guess you could call it. Um, so. 52 homes has created, over the last three years, we've closed over 400 homes each year. And typically that's been over $80 million in volume um, each year. Uh, in that, over 400 homes, personally I've done, over, uh, I've done 29 of those. So about, uh, I guess about 5% um, of my team's production is myself. My focus is um, really inspiring our senior team leaders and inspiring the agents on our team so that they can go out there and uh, do the best that they can. We've got folks that on the team that have closed over 60 units, uh, almost 20 million in volume. We've got uh, just like three years in the business. We've got folks that are two years in the business, closing eight to $10 million in volume. So I'm really pouring into them so that we can get them to the next level. Uh, also was president of the Birmingham Association of Realtors this year. And um, so I've been a part of that executive committee for the last five years. So I've got one more year as past president next year, and uh, we've got a great leader in David Lucas next year. Um, and I'll tell you one of the reasons why I got involved at the association is I wanted to know what's going on in the industry, and I wanted to have my voice heard. Because we, I mean, hopefully if you're sitting in this room, this is your career. And so I wanted to be able to have my voice heard in decisions that were being made locally, statewide, and nationally. And I didn't want people that weren't selling houses making decisions for myself. That's why I got involved and I wanted to give back to our association. And then the home life, I've got two kids. I've got a three and a half year old and I've got a 10 month old and I've got a wife, been married 11 years. So you could say I have a lot going on. Um, so to get to um, with everything you've got going on, busy life, busy professional life, how do you get there? So a lot of people talk about what is my daily routine? I get that asked, uh, I get asked that a lot. So every morning, I pretty much do the same thing. I get up at 5.15 every morning. Uh, the reason why is I want a little bit of peace and quiet and just kind of get in the right headspace in the morning time before the kids typically wake up at 6 o'clock. So I get my cup of coffee. I look at my to-do list for the day, make sure that I don't need to you know, add anything, and just really get in the right mind space. Um, the reason I do... Um, I have got, I used to be where I just get up when the kids would get up, but I've been so much more efficient just waking up a little bit earlier just to have me personal time. It's good to have your time. And then uh, after kids get up, I'm usually in charge uh, in the morning time. And then my wife, um, and then I drop the kids off. My wife is in charge in the evening time. And so uh, the kids, I drop them off, and then when I get um, back from daycare, I do a workout. Um, and I'll talk about a challenge I'm doing here in a minute, but I always are focused on getting into um, health has become a lot more serious over the last three years for me. And, um, and so I am focused, nothing is gonna get in my way uh, of a workout. Like this morning, uh, I knew I had this event, so I made sure that I at least got 30 minutes of working out, which I typically do 45 minutes, but I wanted to make sure I was here a little bit earlier. So just don't make any excuses, you just gotta do it. 
And then, um, and then at that time, I'm headed to the office. And so I have a game plan every day. I've got my to-do list, and, and I'm doing everything I can to accomplish as much as possible. I'm trying to remove distractions. Uh, I don't answer every phone call, um, and that, I do that strategically. I have a voicemail that I'll, I'll talk about here shortly. Um, but I strategically don't answer every phone call. I strategically don't a answer every text that comes in immediately. And I, I know there's, I've got some friends that have Apple Watches and they get notified for every email and every text. I mean, that would drive me up the wall. And so I've got to be able to have time. Like every time you get distracted, it takes you away from other stuff that you're working on. So you've literally just got to put your phone on silent. You've got to stay focused. Get the stuff that you've got done. It's not an emergency. Your phone call is not an emergency. And, and so here's how I get past that. Uh, I, I set a voicemail every morning. And it's, uh, you've reached the voicemail of Gusty Goulis. Today is Monday, December 16th. If you would, please leave your name and number, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also reach me by text for a fast response. And if you're an agent, please uh, schedule your showings through MLS or Showing Time. And, um, and, th and that's the gist. And so what happened, the reason I say the date is to make sure that people know I'm working for that day. How many voicemails do you reach a call and you don't know if they're in business, you don't know if this is their personal phone, you don't know anything. And half the time, especially if they're agents, uh, their voicemail is full. So if you are staying, if you are in business, say that you are in business. And I just think it's, what I found is if it's a small thing, they'll shoot me a text and I can respond because I'm in meetings a good bit. I can respond real quick. And, um, and then I can always call back if need be. But heck, half of our phone calls now are like people trying to sell us health insurance and different things. So. Um, and then I'm at home by six o'clock. Uh, I think there's only been two or three days I've not made it home by six o'clock, and I'm at home on weekends. The reason I'm at home on the weekends is we created a strategy within the team that uh, created on-call weekends. So each one of our agents is on-call for one weekend that shows for everybody. Obviously, you can work at home, um, but we've got agents that show for each one of our agents so that we can actually spend time with our families. Because um, I saw a, a great quote by Barbara Bush uh, over the weekend, and it's like, when all the crowds are gone, all you have is faith, family, and friends. And so, um, you know, you've got to make an impact on your house, and especially with me having two little boys. When we had our kids, life tr uh, truly changed, but I had more focus on my personal life instead of my professional life. Um, so when you think about goals, you know, it, you've got to figure out where you want to go. Like, is it a units goal? Is it a volume goal? Like, where do you want to go? And so you've got to have that endpoint, and so you've got to obviously write that down. And so then the next piece is, how are you going to get there? So think of like Google Maps. You know where you want to go, then you put in the, you put in the address, and that gives you directions. And then sometimes you've got alternate routes. Because we can get to the same place, you just everybody can do it in different ways. Um, and then the third piece of that is um, when do you need to get by there, and is it realistic? And so timing. And so you know, especially when you're looking back at directions, it's you, know, you need to know when you need to leave. You always need to know your numbers. You need to know when you've got to maybe turn it on and maybe work another day of the week. Maybe you can, you know, take your foot off the gas and take it easy that week based on where you want to be. So, um, one of the things that's been important uh, to me is, like I said, health earlier. And so, I'm doing a 75 hard challenge. And what that is, is I've committed to 75 days of uh, maintaining a diet, uh, no alcohol, uh, working out uh, twice a day, two 45-minute workouts, one being outside, um, drinking at least a gallon of water a day, and reading 10 pages of an entrepreneurial-minded book. And, um, and so far, today is day 29 of that. Um, I've lost 19 pounds. Uh, I've worked out, I don't know, 58 times. Um, I've drank uh, 28 gallons of water. Uh, probably visited the bathroom more times in 28 days in the whole year. 
Um, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to challenge myself to say, uh, can you actually do something? Like I was in a position where one of my goals for the end of the year was to be at a certain weight. Well, I got close and then uh, just earlier in the year just kind of, you know, took a step back and it really just got away from me and I just didn't realize it. And so I had to do what I would consider something drastic and this was what I would consider drastic. Uh, drastic changes in what, um, what I was doing. And so um, with that being said, uh, like Friday night, I was out of town all of Friday um, helping on board a team in Auburn and I hadn't drank, I wasn't on pace for my water and I hadn't worked out and so I got one workout in when I got home and then I had to take care of the kids and then um, I was sitting there at like watching live PD Friday night, uh, like 10 o'clock and I'm like, oh, I gotta get another 45 minute workout in. I've got till midnight and I don't want to do this, but because I was committed, I did the workout. And so when you have a commitment, so it's great to have a goal, but it's better to have a commitment. I was committed to get that second workout in. And if I wasn't, if I wasn't committed, I was, I would have, could have easily just laid on the couch and slept. So we're going to be talking about commitments here shortly. So um, I've got some life hacks to success if you want to write some of these down. First off, you need to develop a morning routine. And don't let anything get in the way of that. Update your voicemail daily. It has been mighty helpful for me. I typically do it when I'm on the way to the office. Plan your week out. And so I typically do that on Sunday evening. I've got my game plan. There's a lot of things I do every Monday, every Thursday. Um, go ahead and plan out your week on Sunday. And then make, I mean, as things pop up, you need to add to that. You need to go ahead and book appointments in your calendar. And it's okay to book your own appointments, like prospecting. Go ahead and put it in your calendar. Don't let get anything get in the way. If something gets, gets in the way, then move it to another time. Don't let you know, prospecting get away from you, because that's one of the most important things for you to be successful. Um, I personally use Calendly for appointments. Um, I send it out to folks, like people you know, want to meet for coffee and different things. You know, instead of going the back and forth 20 times to get the right time, I just send a link and it just shows up on my calendar. So maintaining that calendar just makes it easy, it saves time, because you got 15 minutes of wasting time just going the back and forth. You've got to prospect daily. Um, what's colossal to me, like a colossal goal to me, uh, might not be a colossal goal to you and vice versa. So we've got folks in here that might, a colossal goal to them might be selling 30 houses. Well, we've got to put a plan in place to get to that 30 houses. You know, I never thought that I would sell 400 houses, um, but made baby steps to get to that point where I could do that. Um, and now I've got crazy goals to get to 1,000 houses. So next year I want to get to 750, the year after I want to get to 1,000. And so by knowing your numbers, you can put things in place to make those things happen. <laughs> Follow up daily. Um, you probably get phone calls um, you know, from folks that have been working with other agents and they just haven't followed up. So you've got to follow up daily. We're in a, in a, a society that they need to know information ASAP. And guess what? There's 4,000 agents in this market. We can get information from another agent pretty quick. So if you, um, if you slack on that, they will find somebody else. So staying proactive instead of reactive. So how are we on time? Perfect. We're going to do an exercise. Um, all right. So what I want you all to do is I want, does everybody have pen and paper? Yeah. All right. You got one person. Pen and paper. <laughs> We're going to write down your goals for 2020. And if you don't have your goals, we're going to sit here and think about it for a minute. What I would recommend to you all is have two professional goals and one personal goal. Two professional goals, 
and one personal goal. Does everybody have at least one goal down? All right, good. So the next step on that is you need to de uh, declare three commitments that you need to do in the next week to make progress on those goals. So if you've only got one written down, make one commitment on what you've got to do in the next week to make progress on that goal. And the third step on this is to be held accountable by someone that you don't want to let down. And that's kind of the key piece is um, being held accountable. It's that commitment. Hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to complete it by next Monday. I'm running an accountability group right now that we meet every Monday at 3 o'clock. We started with 14, and I think we're at 7 now. Because people weren't committed. And this is literally only the third week. And that's how quick people fall off. So you've got to make a commitment not only to yourself, um, but you're making a commitment to others. So these are the things that are going to help you achieve colossal goals in 2020. So one thing that I do want to offer you is um, I'm running free accountability groups. Uh, if you would like to be a part of one of our accountability groups, uh, you can just text accountability to 205. 218-7560. There, they will be live. Well, one will be live, one will be on Zoom. So Angela, I'm not leaving you out there, pal. What was the number again? 205 218-7560. And I wish y'all a very successful 2020. Thank y'all very much.